Hello and good afternoon at CAS Communication Camp 2023. It's day two. The stage is Bits and Bäume. Um, as you can probably see, I'm, I'm, I'm an old guy. Uh, and for me, if I hear green IT, I think of IBM mainframe terminals, the green, the green light from the terminal, glowing, flickering. Um, and so when I, when I saw this talk, I said, oh, yeah, this is about old machinery and old computers and old terminals. And I'm like, oh, no, actually, it's about environmental impact of, of IT. So before I blame myself any further, because I have no clue and our speaker is way more well-versed in, in knowing all of this, um, this is fooled by the website Carbon Calculator, green coding and measuring the environmental impacts of IT. Please welcome with a very warm round of applause, Roberta. Hi everyone, thank you very much. Welcome to my talk, Fooled by the Website Carbon Calculator. Um, when I think of green IT, I think of, of the environmental impacts of IT, and this is also what this talk is about. Um, it's a short talk, just 15 to 20 minutes. Usually when I start talking about environment and IT, I take about an hour at least. You have to forcefully stop me. So let's see how I do on the timing. Um, what I would like to introduce to you um, is the context of why did we even look at website carbon calculator tools. Um, then, of course, what did, did we find? What were the challenges? And I'm going to leave you at the end with some final thoughts. So let's start with the context. Um, I'm a member of a community of practice that is looking at green technology at my employer's company. Um, and we are a group exploring different techniques of how can we code, how can we write and create software in a way that is more environmentally friendly, that is using less resources, less electricity, um, less hardware utilization, etc. Um, and so last year we spent a lot of time researching um, recommendations, how to optimize code, what saves more energy. And so this year we said we want to get our hands dirty, we want to try this out, does it really make a difference? So we said we are going to do a proof of concept around green coding um, for the question of does green coding really matter? And our idea was we are going to build a web app, a front end app, um, in two ways in a green way, optimized way, and in a normal standard way. We did end up in, in th doing it in three ways. Because we got curious and said, if we really want to fuck this up, if you create the worst case, how bad can it get? But the talk is not about this at all. Um, I'm just giving you the, the context um, because the step two was analyzing the apps that we created and um, measuring the difference, if there really is a difference, if it's really measurable with these tools. So. Um, to share a bit with you what the kind of techniques were. Again, I'm not going to go into these in detail, but we had some things in mind that where we wanted to try the differences. None of these are like rocket science, but we just wanted to see what really is the difference of using an optimized technique to using a non-optimized technique. And so we started building our app, and I'm showing you a screenshot. Uh, for each of these optimization techniques that we wanted to test, we created a single page in our site. Um, and this is app A, and this is app B. And I swear they are different screenshots of different apps. Um, the idea was to create something that looks exactly the same, but behind the hood, under the hood, the um, techniques that we used would be different. And um, for example, um, for the image optimization, we created a page, we put a gallery of cat pictures on there because obviously the internet is for cat pictures. Um, and so for each of the pages and the, each of the, of the techniques that we wanted to test, we uh, put something on there that also the user that we could interact with during our testing. So we thought, great, we created these apps, we are done, now we're just going to do some simple tests, we're going to see the differences, and yay, we are finished. Um, well, we were wrong. 
when we started to run our tests with the web, uh, website carbon calculator tools, we ran into a lot of issues, we ran into a lot of problems. One of them was that it's not possible to test individual pages, you're always just testing the main page basically, um, the whole site, or they, these tools are um, doing an average of um, all your sub pages, uh, but you can't really test anything individually, so how can we see for any of the techniques if any of them have a difference? Um, this was one of the first things that we found out, but we found out that there are more and more and more issues. So the POC became a lot more about trying to understand what the hell are these calculator tools actually calculating. And this is an opportunity to um, for a special thanks and a special shout out to Dedalo AI. They are a um, startup less than a year old and um, they are also one of those companies doing a website carbon calculator tools they're a startup that we happen to know that we happen to be friends with and they um, let us really look behind the hood they actually built for us a beta version um, that allowed the testing of individual pages and that gave us a lot more information um, so that we could actually understand what we are really measuring Okay, now you're for sure curious about what was the difference that we measured, even though this talk is not about the POC itself. I'm just showing you as a highlight the difference. Um, so you can see here for two of the pages where we had the extremist test result, um, the difference ranges from 35% to 99% of savings on CO2. This is measured with data low AI. I'm saying this, it's measured, it's not the real CO2, and I'm also explicitly naming the tool, because in each tool we will get a different result. So, um, awesome, green coding matters. Don't write shitty code, optimize your code, take care that your code runs really smoothly and is efficient. Um, and the question arose, what do these website carbon calculator tools really calculate, how do they calculate CO2? So, a lot of them use some version of this formula that is proposed by the sustainablewebdesign.org um, and is basically taking the amount of data, multiplying it with 0.81, multiplying it with the carbon intensity of the electricity, and then you get the total CO2. Let's talk a little bit about this formula. Um, let's start at the bottom. The total CO2 means really everything. So all the electricity consumption in the data center, the network, the end user device, and all the embodied emissions. Embodied emissions are those emissions caused during the production of the hardware. So really considering everything. And everything should fit in this simple formula? Hmm. <laughs> so, all right. The CO2 intensity, this is the global, um, the in intensity of the global energy mix. Okay, we could use any other, um, form um, any other number for a local energy mi uh, mix or for, say, we have a data center that we are running completely on coal, then we can, of course, substitute um, our own numbers here. What is really curious is this number of 0 0.81, which is um, the assumed consumption of energy that is caused by transferring one gigabyte of data. And I'm going to go into a little bit of detail on the next slide. Um, and then what they, the formula doesn't include, but is actually the case for most of these website calculator tools is that this is the transferred data for the initial page load. And I'm also going to go into a bit more detail uh, because these two points of the initial page load and this, this value of 0 0.81, of course, are the, the, the curious values. So data is an energy proxy. Hmm. Where does this number come from of 0 0.81? This is from one scientific study 
um, is, is linked at the bottom. It's quite small and you can't see it because of the sun, but <laughs> the link is there. Um, and basically they did a rough estimate of the entire um, energy consumption of the all of the internet and then um, a estimate of uh, the, the total data volume that is transmitted in the internet and then they said voila <laughs> this is the number. It's a little bit more complex of course but <laughs> um, I'm simplifying this a lot. Um, there are several studies out there that try to link um, data, the amount of data with the energy consumed um, and the the results that they get are completely different. There's like a factor of 300 um, as a difference um, and there are lots of reasons why this is but this is just one value from one study so we should question this value, we should try to improve this value and we should also question if, 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 if data is even um, a good energy proxy. Because of course reading, writing, transmitting, processing data is, is causing a lot of energy consumption. Um, but what about all these other things like CPU, GPU, other hardware utilizations, um, etc. Um, our app was a front-end only app. We didn't do anything in the cloud. So for us, most likely the data transmission is really the correct thing to use, but if you think of an app like ChatGPT where you're just sending a text message basically and you're just getting a text message back, but in the cloud there is some crazy calculation happening, um, that's not data that is causing the energy consumption, not data that is being transmitted, but it's all the calculation done by the AI in the cloud. So for these cases, um, the, the, the using data as an energy proxy probably isn't a good idea. Um, so, of course, this is also a question, um, what else can we use? We didn't find any formula that would translate CPU usage into um, energy consumption and then CO2. If you know anything, let me know. <laughs> I'm always curious to learn more. Um, so, then there's also the question of looking only at the initial page load. Um, if we only look at the initial page load, we are not getting anything that happens after the initial page load. So any of the user interactions that happen uh, once the page is loaded are not measured at all. And again, we have a huge difference in um, the page, depending what it is. If I'm just looking up um, an article in Wikipedia, okay, the page load, that's it. If I am going to Netflix or some other streaming site to watch a movie, after the initial page load is where the data is being transmitted, is where the stuff happens. Um, so we are missing a lot of the user interactions um, that we are, we are not measuring them at all. Um, this also means that several of the optimi optimization techniques that we wanted to try could not be detected at all. Because some of these techniques only play a role after the page has been loaded. So here are the results per page that we measured. And in the, the green color columns, um, we have those pages where we have local and global optimization techniques that are really uh, being measured. And then in the blue columns, um, we are not detecting the actual optimization technique that we want to test, but only the global strategies, the, only the global um, optimization strategies play a role here, not the actual optimization technique. And who only loads a page? Um, <laughs> most people load a page and then do something. Um, so we wanted to know how relevant this use case is. And we looked a little bit into um, the data around uh, search engine optimizations because, of course, for companies it's quite important that people land on their page and then actually interact with the page. Um, and we found some values. Again, there are different values. I just used these numbers now. Um, between 26 and 70 percent of bounce rate means that this is the amount of people who just open the page and then leave again without doing any kind of interaction. So if we are now just going to say, okay, let's assume 50 percent. 
50% of the interactions in the internet are then covered by these kinds of tests, but 50% aren't. Um, and this is getting me to the final thoughts. Um, this morning for fun, I tested um, events CCCDE with some of the uh, website carbon calculators that are out there. And um, you can see I got four different results from um, 0 0.37 grams to 1.24 grams. So it's quite a range of what is the result for um, the page. Um, or the entire site. And it's also interesting how they're wording the result. There's only one of them that is talking about estimation. The others just say this is your carbon footprint. Only one says this is estimated. Um, then I find it quite curious that the first one is saying only, so they are including a, a, a kind of judgment and saying, "Oh, you're not transmit, you're not causing very many um, CO2 emissions." Um, so who says that 0 0.37 is only? Who says this is little? Who says it is good? Um, they are determining this by crawling other sites and then comparing your site to those other sites. But this is basically only saying we are better than the rest, but does it mean that we are good? Is a different topic. Um, and then only one of those uh, calculators actually gave additional information of where the most energy consumption was caused and is giving some hints on how you can pr improve it. And of course, for us as in developers, it is important to understand this point of how can we write better code, how can we create a better website. Um, for all of them, it was either very difficult to understand what they're, how they're actually getting to the result or it was not possible at all. And this brings me to the final, final thoughts. OK, so these estimations, they're estimations. They're really rough. Is this a problem? Here, um, my personal opinion is it can be used to raise awareness that IT is consuming energy. But transparency, for me personally, is the issue. They're just saying, this is your carbon footprint. They're not explaining how they calculated anything. Um, they, they are not even telling you that this is estimation, uh, estimated. They're just telling you this is the result. Um, and of course, as a last thought, we need some tools that we can use as developers so that we can create better um, code. And it's. Um, this was now a PUC and uh, testing things uh, for web design, but of course also for all these other, other areas of coding. Um, and if you have any idea, if you have any knowledge, I would be super happy to connect and learn from you as well. And with the same thing, thanks for listening to me. I, I would take one or two quick, with emphasis on quick questions. Comments later, questions please. <laughs> no, 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 questions, quick questions. Well, okay, sorry for, but talk afterwards, because we have to set up the stage for the next person. I'm, I'm here in the village, um, I'm part of the crew of Bits and Bäume for this habitat, so I'm going to be here not just now, but also in the next days, come and find me. Well. In that case, please give another warm Roberta! Woo!